Hello and welcome to Tax TV. Uh, quite a bit to discuss about on about transfers and Bolton game. Probably we'll finish off and see what kind of players you think potentially go or come in. Ryan B, the tag as always, mate. It's a pleasure to, to join. Um, well. I'm not busy with work and back and trying to fit things in and back. But this morning, uh, we start off with a few rumblings going off saying, you know, certain players might be going out on loan. You yeah. know, Collins wanting, you know, midfield and a striker. There's that much going off on socials, mate. It's like mind blowing, isn't it? Um, again, we've got Pines in. Um, looks you unit. I can't wait to see him in a red shirt on pitch. What, what's your tech? What, you know, I think a few bands of fans are like waiting like last minute and thinking, you know, we're going to get what, what's your taking at a minute, mate? This bit transfer window. <laughs> I think a lot will depend. My, my overall take on the window will depend on what happens today, mate. Um, mm. You know, Donovan Pines is a great signing. You know, well, on 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 the, <laughs> it looks a great signing, doesn't it? Um, mm. On the strength of the fact that he's played, he's played a, a decent level in MLS. He looks a really good player. He looks a decent character. He's a unit. He looks a really good signing. However, he's not been able to play yet because he's not match fit and stuff like that. So hopefully, we can rectify that as soon as possible. But there are other areas that need strengthening, as as we saw last weekend when we've got a couple of key players out in midfield that we were on bare bones, weren't we? And against Oxford when we got those injuries, we we're absolutely on bare bones. Yeah. So we definitely need we definitely need a midfielder, uh, and like Neil Collins says, he wants a he wants a striker. So that's his opinion. He works with players every day. So, um, it could be that they've played a blinder. You know, and we end up with a really good window if we, if we get three, at least, you know, three signings coming in today and nobody other than really, I mean, going out, his style's going out. There's potential for Lopetar going out as well. For me, if there's rumours about Lopetar going out, then surely that means that the Josh Earl deal must be done because why would he get rid of another centre-back when we're on, you know, we're struggling for centre-backs as it is, aren't we? Or struggling mm -hmm. for, for match-quality centre-backs, I suppose. Um, so, yeah, it's I don't I don't know if it's a I don't know if it's a ploy to have have sort of like a big a big day today where we announce a, a, you know a number of few players to make it a bit bit of a make a bit bit of a show of it you know um, I personally don't agree with that I think that if you get a sign in you need to sign him because I think it's been quite clear where we've need strength we've needed strengthening in squad this season you know we've been say, we've been looking forward to January transfer window. And it's been apart from Donovan Pines, it's been extremely quiet. Um, and I think there's a lot of fans that are that are anxious, uh, and, yeah. and you can see it on socials, can't you? And you know what it's like when people get when, when people get anxious and they get upset. Rumors start flying around, or people's opinions start getting thrown out there as facts, and you can kind of understand it because we're all fans and we all love the club and we all want it to do. We all we all want to do well. And it looks, <laughs> I'm sure the I'm sure the club are working, you know, really hard in the background. But to a lot of people online, they can't appreciate that. And and you know, I think if they could have announced the Josh Earl deal a bit earlier, if it has gone through, it would have alleviated a lot of those stresses. I don't I don't really agree with leaving it all to today. I don't agree with any team, Lee. I don't know why. It seems to be an obsession across the whole EFL, doesn't it? And the it, like like leaving it while last day has been some sort of like, you know, magic day to get a few signings in, make a bit of a make a bit of a day of it. I don't get it. I prefer to get me I prefer to get my business done early, but yeah. I guess we'll kind of see, mate. If it's just Donovan Pines coming in, I think not that he's he's, he's a great player, but I think that will be a poor window. Um, if we get a couple more, it'd be all right. I think if we get three or four, if we get another three in today in the decent decent level, I could probably call it a decent one. Let's see yeah. what happens. <laughs> we'll, we'll come back to it a bit later because I've got uh, some stuff, Amanda Ginnings and stuff like that with his interview with Colin. So we'll we'll go back to that in a minute. So we've touched on players kind of thing with rumours going off. Of course, we've got a big game coming up. Uh, right, big game. Bolton Wonders, mate. I mean, uh, some people, well, again, you look on social, some people saying it's a mech or break. I don't agree with that mech or break. But it is a massive game. This it's, it's dark, it is because we, uh, we just need to catch points well. on them, don't we? Sorry, Neil, yeah. go on. Yeah, we need to catch no, points on them, test. and yeah. it's but it is again, it's only three points, isn't it? But I don't want to lose ground because everyone around us seems to be doing all right. I think the draw of the night between Oxford and Portsmouth suited us, suited everybody in that top six really well, actually, not just not just Barnsley. 
it, I think that was the best result for everybody all around, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, but everybody, like, you know, on Saturday when we lost to Exeter, everybody else apart from Oxford won, didn't they, around us? So, um, we, we, you know, I don't want to start falling too far behind pace after we'd done so well to get close up to that, to the automatic positions. Um, I think Bolton are probably one of the favourites to go up automatic, I have to say. I think they've, you know, they look to be um, recruiting well and they've, they've they've sort of really at the stride this season. It's going to be a really tough game. And, it, it you know, I think if we get, if we get um, some new players in and, and they add to the squad and we go out there and we play anything like we can do when we're, when we're playing well, I think we've got a good chance in game of coming away with a point or, you know, potentially three points. But if we feel anything like we did against Exeter um, and play anything like we did against Exeter, we'll come we'll come away with now, mate, because they will punish us. I think that's my opinion on it all. I mean, Bolton, you look at Bolton, I mean, decent stadium, you know. It's, uh, it's a know, fab when, stadium. When, when we went to last, last season, uh, atmosphere, brilliant. I... I that uh, enjoyed it, me. I really did. Um, I think Bolton could be, be seeing this as well as a bit of revenge. Uh, Absolutely. As in, like, obviously in playoffs, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, that adds a bit more mix to it. I'm hoping Luke Connell, I've, I've, I've heard a bit about him this morning. Um, I follow and stuff like that, and it looks like he's up for it. Uh, he's got great affection for Bolton fans, obviously, being there as a, as a youngster. Uh, they, went, they went through all their turmoil. Unfortunately, he had to move on for for money reasons and stuff like that. But again, uh, Luca always gets a bit of banter from fans. Uh, but he, he, you know, look, like Luca said, he says, "I enjoy my times there, but at times I had to move on for you know things what were happening at Bolton." Yeah. So again, you look at you look at the situation now with Bolton. I think they've they've restructured it and come back well. Ian Everett, my mic manager, love him or hate him, but he seems to get the best out of the team. And for me, another manager, Ian Everett, I think goes under the radar a bit, a bit like a John Eustace, where he is very methodical and gets his team how he wants it wants him to play. Yeah. And I think he's doing a decent job at Bolton, if I'm being honest. And I've we've got a couple of games in hand and all. So I get where you're coming from where for me, but we're looking at one of potential favourites. I think automatics. they're really strong. Yeah, really strong contender to go up, mate. Automatics with 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 uh, with another, whoever that might be, potentially, mm-hmm. potentially Portsmouth. Um, but Derby are pushing for it. For us, I think we've got to get some signings in today to make sure that we've got a strong enough squad to to, to push for those second places. But personally, I think we'll end up in playoffs. But I think Bolton are definitely a strong contender to go up there. They've got a good squad. Now. I think it shows what happens when a, when a club sticks with a manager. Mm. Sticks with a manager, you know, because he's been there a good few years. And it it takes time to to turn a club around and turn, you know, it takes time. It doesn't take, it doesn't happen overnight. It's often not often you get a manager come in and just just rip 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 it up. And it's really great to see that Bolton have done that. And it's paying off for them now. You know, they've had a few years of mm. They've had a few years of, of, of hurt, haven't they? They've had a few few years where they've really, really struggled. Yeah. And it's, you know, as much as I'd like to beat Bolton Saturday, it's also nice to see the Bolton Bol- are doing so well because they're, they're, they're a great, you know, they're a great club with a great fan base. Um, So, yeah, it's definitely going to be a difficult task. And I'll be honest with you, mate, if you, give me a, if you offered me a point now, I'd snatch your hand off. <laughs> no, we'll come back snatch to your hand off, this in a minute. So, but I, it's true what you said, Vian. I think it's what we've said before on channel is that you need a manager with continuity and it just goes to show, give him a couple of transfer windows, kind of sort the squad out. You improve the squad, you improve the starting eleven, And again, Neil Collins, to be fair, yeah, had a pre-season this season. He had to work with what he's already walked into players who yeah. come, you know, or who's already left. So you look at like Ian Everett, and again, just like what he said, yeah, continuity. A manager there that's going to, yeah, take time, you stick with him, and it reaps the rewards. It's not a like one season wonder. And I think us as Barnsley start not, start need to do that when you look at the manager what's come and gone before all these bloody release clause and this other. If you want to progress, you've got to start from foundation. There's no point like having a good season, then take it apart brick by brick, and then chuck it all back in and mix it and think, right, all being well, we can knock on for automatics again or or yeah. for a playoff spot. You, 
you've got to build on that progression. And that's that for me. That starts with manager, backroom staff, member uh, players who you recruit uh, for the manager to fit his style of play. And I'll, I'll be able to knock on. But I were, I were coming back to you on that. I mean, starting 11, I mean, I'm hoping Luke Connell starts. He come up at last 20 minutes. Um, again, the car, I don't know if he's going to be in or out. Um, so again, you're looking. Talk about, as I so it's, I'm, hoping yeah. that's, I'm hoping that's going to be Josh Earl, mate. I really do. Um, but... Then you're looking at Kane, Herbie uh, Kane in midfield, like you said, Via. At times, his midfield was non existent. It was baffling. Well, baffling first half against the next side, really. When they just seemed to like walk through us, we had a tackle going in, uh, getting stood off and too much. We, it was not a cat and else, and can do that against Bolton. We just get punished, yeah. Exactly. Put, yeah they're, exactly. You know, they're a really, really good team, mate, and they will and they will punish us if we if we try playing all that. I think what what a lot of lads were saying around me, Ponty, and, and it, I, I had to agree with him for staff that we just, we just had no midfield on Saturday, yeah. It just kept saying we don't like we don't look like we've got no midfield, so. It's interesting that we, you know, we think that sometimes that we we Kane that we think he goes missing in games and stuff like that. But we we clearly missed him and Luca on on Saturday. We clearly missed them because although Herbie does make a lot of mistakes sometimes, he also does a lot of other, he also does a lot of good work as well in there, doesn't he? You know, and we clearly missed him, mate. So it's interesting to see that that although it can be perceived as sometimes he goes missing. When he is actually missing, <laughs> yeah. we, we, we really do miss him. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm so definitely hoping that, there, that, that Luca and Herbie are back Saturday because we, we need to be at as full strength as we possibly can against a very good Bolton team to get out of that game Saturday. Midfield battles need to be won, don't we? Definitely yeah. midfield battles need to be won. So I, I, having all been misses against Herbie Kane, you, you certainly miss Herbie Kane then. So a lot of yeah. missing there. <laughs> 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 Something like that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I get where you're coming from, though. We uh, became, yeah, he might duck side of his backwards pass, but on, you know, when he's off at ball, it just goes to show the the areas that we have been lacking. Um, yeah. And like I said, Luca Connell. I mean, it's it's not a coincidence that when Phillips, Luca Connell, and Herbie became them trio were playing, things got looked a lot more rosy and clicking together. Look at Rumley, we're on trio. Yeah, back what trio we're on season. Then. Yeah. So again, and then Herbie Kane, you know, he gets uh, played at month for December. But and I'm like, it's not not a coincidence that but Luke Connell's come back as well. So again, yeah. it's a key key core uh, of a team. What's like missing, and against like such as like I said, Bolton. No disrespect to Exeter, but we shouldn't have done that against Exeter and Bolton. You definitely can't do that. No. Uh, so you touched on it there. You you know, score predictions. Um, I'd, I'd come away with if, like I'd say, if, I'm hoping we won't win. I, I really do. And oh, it'd be an amazing, it'd be an amazing, it'd probably be the best three points all season, mate, if I'm being honest. It'd I'm probably be the best three be points be... all season if we go and get three there. But I'm going to be realistic. Because <sighs> we don't know what's coming in today. We don't know what's coming in today, do we? So mm -hmm. as, it, as it stands, I think I'm, I'm going to say one all, mate. I'm going to say one all. And I think that is a good result, if I'm being honest. I think to go away to Bolton, considering form they're on and how strong they've been at home this season, I think to go there and come away with a with a draw would would mm. be a, would be a solid point. Mm. Um, and I'm not. Yeah. I think that's a realist. I think that's a realistic um, potential scoreline for us, or potential result for us, really. As much as I'd love to see us win, I'd love to be proved wrong, but yeah. I'm going to say one all in it. Yeah. Um... I'm going to say two two. I just think there's there's goals in it, um, especially our de you know our defence show back against Exeter. Yeah, you know yeah. we showed it against Exeter, and no disrespect to Exeter, but you you're coming against a Bolton side who are you know they're up there on form, but they're not you know they're not there for notes. Um, I'm open proven, like I said, there's players in transfer window now. Well, these players, even if they do come in, are they going to be up to speed? Are they going to be starting? Are they going to be on bench? Might not even make a squad. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? It's the unknown. Um, I'm up and proven wrong. Yeah, look, I'd love to go to uh, University of Bolton, I think they call it now. The Uni Ball, I think it's called, isn't it? Is the Uni Ball. <laughs> Man, it changes all the time, doesn't it, David? It's the only one we sponsoring them this year. Um, but I'd love to come away from there with a one note win. I'll take that smash and grab run and, and do it. But you, it's just going to be one of them kind of games where it's going to be 
which way is it going to go? And like you say, you got Charles, you know, at Bolton. Yeah. Um, if he's still there, you know. If he's still there, yeah, because a lot of people about him going in this. Uh... Yeah. Uh, but again, I've come away with two two. I think it'd be a result away at a very good Bolton side, and we haven't lost points. As in a, a defeat, we still kept in touch. Very tight up there. It's going to be even tougher because you've got Derby County coming up and that. Um, so we need to be, like you said, be a bit bit plays what we're going to get. So we're going back to the, you know, the, the transfers and stuff like that. Collins has said that, you know, possibly Styles look like he's going to be going out long or whatever. And I think for the last two games, he's had this illness all of a sudden. Um, and this big talk with Sunderland back brought down. So again, Styles going. I don't think it'd be a big loss for me, if I'm being honest. Not the way he's playing. Uh, if, it, if it were the old Callum Styles, it'd be a massive loss, mate. The, the current yeah. Callum Styles is just... Nah, yeah. And I, I think and, he's you know, I've liked him as a player. I think, you know, at one point, it was, I could arguably one of the best players in the squad, if not the best player, but certainly in season under Val. Um, Do you think his head's been turned, Ryan? Yeah, of course he has, mate. Cause, and, and, and also, you've got to think from Callum's point of view, mate, Hungary have just qualified for Euros and he's playing third division football. He wants to, you know, Hungary have qualified. He wants to play in that tournament. So you can see from his point, he wants to be playing at highest level possible as well. You can see from a personal thing why. Um, what I don't what I don't agree with is the apparent lack of effort, like the, you know, the disregard for the football club that he plays for at the moment. You know, because he, he's, he's not, he's, yeah, he's getting paid. And also for me, I've never understood why people do that, Neil, why players do that. Because surely, even if you're still there, you want to be performing to your highest. Yeah, you know the the best of your ability, so you can, you know, try and manufacture the best move possible for you instead mm-hmm. of showing a shitty attitude and and potentially putting people off. You know what I mean? So yeah. anyway, it's up to him in it, but I think it's best move for all parties now that he moves on, mate. Yeah, um, like we said, who knows who's going to be coming in? Rumours going about that Casper Wapperton may be going out on loan, which again, it's only rumours and stuff like that. It is. I mean. I think I don't think he's going to let him go unless we've got another defender coming in, which is hopefully Josh Earl. So mm-hmm. because I can't see him doing that. So strikers, would you see Max Waters go out on loan? I think he needs a loan. If I'm being honest, he needs to go out on loan, mate. He he's not he's not good enough to play at this at this level now. He in it's he's not been all season. Needs. He's not been. He's had, and he's had lots of chances. It's not like he's not been given yeah. the opportunity. He's been given lots of starts and he's been given lots of substitution opp- opportunities. And he has very, very rarely produced any sort of any sort of flashes of him being a decent player, mate. He just looks he looks looks like a fish out of water. He looks completely out of his depth, mate. Mm. He, he just don't look good enough. And I don't I, I don't want to be horrible to the lad, but that's 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 a reality. And you know, how we got a start of Eddie Sam Cosgrove on Saturday, I'll never know. I'll just I just just don't understand it. And for me, he needs to go out to League Two or potentially National League. To go and get some, you know, some decent. Start bagging some, a brace, really, and yeah, it's to get, get a, a, a confidence for that lad more than out yeah. else, because he must, you know, he must hear it from crowd mate groans mm. and, and stuff like that. You know what I mean? He must hear it. So, but you know, that's on his head, isn't it? He's had all the opportunities, mate, and he's not taking any of them. He's not taking any of them. So, so if you that's, that's it. That's that, that's down to him. And I think he needs. He either needs a move away or a loan away, mate. So if you were a club now, then and you know. Um, I won't say an open check, but because it's not fair, but got to recruit me in as means close we have. Looking at, you know, say Styles has gone out, um, and nobody else, you know, came and called still here, right? So, what, you know, what areas, how many players realistically do you think we should be going for? Uh, I think we definitely need another centre back. Definitely need that Josh Earl deal to happen. I think we definitely need that. Um, and then I think, you know, if we've got Pines, um, uh, De Givney and, and and Josh Earl across that back three, all their own players, not loans, hmm. I think that could potentially be a really strong back three. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, definitely a centre-back. Maybe one in midfield, you know, another one in midfield. If Styles is going, we're going to need to replace him because he is, although he's not been playing the last couple of games, he still makes up part of that midfield, doesn't he? Has been linked with and he, can, he can do both. If he's gone, then that means that that gap there. So if we've got an injury or 
we need to substitute somebody during the game, who's who's going to be coming on? Baez has been linked from Wednesday, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, but he's also heavily linked with, 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 with Blackpool as well, isn't he? So... I think Blackpool. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, you wouldn't have to move out, would he? <laughs> no, no, no. But would he want? Would he? Would he want to go from Wednesday to Barnsley? Um, we, we've seen it go. You know, we've seen it happen before. He passed, haven't we? So mm. I don't. I don't know, mate. Would you we'll have a striker? Would you? Uh, I think. I think we need, need a striker, team. mate. Yeah, I do think we need a striker. Um, I just think we need someone else. Another. A, a, another option because we. It seems that when. You know, either McAtee or Cole go off. Whoever's coming on is not is not banging them in. Although I do like I do like Sam Cosgrove, but he ain't scoring enough goals, is he? That's the thing. But he is he is a nuisance when he comes on. And I thought he, I thought he actually played really well against uh, Exeter on, yeah. on Saturday because he he, he he does get a lot of you know he gets his shirt pulled, he gets pulled all over the place, and don't get much of referee. But he tends to take two players with him and create space for others. Mm. He's a big strong lad. But he ain't scoring enough goals, so we could do with some, just somebody else just to maybe finish some chances. Um, the daft is that same considering how many bloody how many strikers we've got on his books. But it's <laughs> the it's the it's the level of those strikers, isn't it? That's the that's that's the difference, isn't it? That's the, yeah, that's the, the, that's the thing. And Jallo seems to be playing a lot more. I don't know if he's got a bit of a knock or if he's played for twenty three. He's certainly not been putting match day squad for the last few games. So no, Mash that uh, Mash on bench money, which we're good to yeah. see actually. Yeah, a long yeah. time, Aidan Marsh, another player out of contract. And uh, I think Akroy's uh, doing a decent job at uh, Buxton. He's going out on loan and Baylor. Yeah. Yeah. So, again, like I said, an imbalanced squad. On being well, we can get readdressed. Uh, def- not in this window, but at least make a start. And then come summer, definitely to have a, have a hover on and, and have a look at the quality and strength and depth in some areas. Because... We are lacking in certain areas like we might, we might be a bit fed there, mate. If no, if nobody resigns the contracts in in summer, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it might be a big selling point if we get to championship. But that's another, yeah, that's another, another discussion. Um, as always, Ryan, um, I'll be doing a live tomorrow at seven o'clock. See about the transfers and what's gone, who's come, who's and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Plus, not debate. Um, but as always, Ryan, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. I know you've been yes, uh, busy in that. Uh, quite a bit we've got through Bolton and transfers people who's watching let us know your comments let us know your thoughts on transfers uh, players coming and going who would you recruit and why that'd be an interesting one as well uh, one thing left to say you Reds <laughs>